All right, you guys. So today is question and answer again. Um, I'm pulling up a version of the bonus. Give me one second to do that. And uh, if you guys have questions, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can send them in chat. Uh, yesterday, we did mostly volume and integrals. I'm fine doing that again, or we can move to sequence series, however you guys want to do it. We're going to do uh, today, and then we'll do tomorrow as well. And then we're going to do a review session Sunday afternoon that's just kind of general for the final. Um, so I will let you guys pick up from there. So what do you guys have questions on? I have a question about uh, the polar coordinates. OK, like sure. Videos. How many total videos are there that I we should watch? There are five. Let me double check that. Um, there, there are five on parametric and polar together. So like for this week, there are, I believe there are five. Um, OK, because I think I'm missing then the fifth video, the, like the third one on polar coordinates. Let me double check that. Give me one sec. Sorry, I didn't think about pulling that up. Um, so if you go to playlist, and then there's Calc 2 Unit 5. There's five of them. So, OK, here. I'm going to send a link in chat to the playlist page. And this is what it looks like if you go directly to that link. So unit five videos one through five. And so there's three polar coordinates and two parametric. And they're all pretty short. Like it's classes cut in half so that they're uh, not, you know, an hour video long. That's what I was doing last summer when I converted them. So I think this is probably just like one class split in half. And same thing here. Like this is one or two classes split into three parts. Um, so hopefully it won't take too, too long. But yeah, so those are the five videos. So two on parametric, three on polar. And then in the shared drive, there's one handout on each, I believe. Let me double check that too. Um, but I think there's one handout on each one. And then, yeah, Dominic, so the next thing will be 25 on the bonus. Um, so hang on. So if you go into the 156, if you go into the 156 shared drive, that is where you, so unit five is parametric polar. So in, in once or folder one is parametric and there is no parametric equations to this semester. So it's just the first worksheet and then the solutions. And then on polar coordinates, same thing. There's a polar coordinates worksheet and solutions. And so if you're good with those, you should be good to go for the final. Um, okay, let me pull up number 25. Does that answer the question? So the, okay, cool, cool, cool. So let me um, pull up number 25 on the bonus. And my bad guys, I had to have this pulled up. And then I just got in here right at 12.30. So it is still loading. And yeah, so, okay, so I'm getting, uh, my bad, it should be, so you guys can chat publicly, my bad, it is now. So, okay, so we've got 25 and then 38 and then two and 27. So let me get those and then we'll take some more here in a few minutes. Um, sorry, just taking a second to get logged into WebAssign. And... Okay, bonus assignment right here. Man, it's taking time. Okay, 25 is first. And okay, so we have, we'll just call it P, I think it's a row, but whatever. So uh, on 25, what I have is the integral of P to the fourth natural log of P DP. Um, is that, so I know they change a little bit. Is that pretty much what you have, Dominic? Okay, cool. Um, so when you're doing these, these, this is an integration by parts problem. So you might try like a U sub real quick, but there's not really one that's gonna change that problem at all. Uh, like I said, maybe you try a couple things, but I don't I don't know that you can do a whole lot with U sub. I, or in fact, you can't do a whole lot with U sub. Um, you want to do parts. And so the idea is that if you're doing parts, you could let U equal 
p to the fourth and let dv equal natural log of p. Or you could let u equal natural log p. Oh, my bad. This would be natural log p dp. And dv would equal p to the fourth dp. And so those are the two like most obvious setups. There are other things you can do. Um, it, the one on the right doesn't work well. And the reason why is because if you go from dv to v, you actually have to do parts in order to do that. And maybe you could get it to work, but uh, that's a lot harder. So, so going from dv to v, you'd have to do integration by parts just to do that. So this is not an approach we want to take. If we do this approach, du then is one over p dp, and v is the antiderivative of that, which is one fifth p to the fifth. And so if we remember the integration by parts formula, it's the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And so the original problem is the u dv part. And so natural log p times p to the fourth dp, that's what this is. And then we get uv. So u times v, whoops, u times v is natural log p times one fifth p to the fifth. So you want to kind of neaten that up as you go. So write it as one fifth p to the fifth natural log p and then minus the integral of v times du. So you take one fifth p to the fifth times one over p dp. So again, I'm going to neaten that up as I go. I'm going to pull the one fifth out of this integral. And then I've got uh, p to the fifth times one over p. Well, that's p to the fourth. And then dp. And we're not quite done, but it's pretty straightforward from here. Does it, any questions on how I'm getting to there or how I know to do that? The harder part is knowing to do that, not actually doing it. OK. And so then the integral of p to the fourth dp is one fifth p to the fifth. So we get one fifth p to the fifth natural log p minus one over 25, because it's one fifth times one fifth p to the fifth plus c. And that's really it on that one. But again, the, a lot of these, it's true for a lot of integrals, actually doing it's not that bad. It's knowing how to set it up and uh, figuring out which option works best. Um, for these. Any questions on that problem? Okay. All right. So the next thing I got in chat, and guys, I had it set so you could only message me, but you can message publicly now if you want. Um, that was a mistake. Um, so, okay. So number 38 is the next question. So question is partial fractions like number 38. And so let me pull up my 38. So, okay, so the 38 that I have is the integral of x minus 4 over x plus 6, x minus 2. Is this similar enough? Uh, okay, yeah. So, okay, so yours, if it's not exactly the same, it's going to be about like this. So the nice thing about this one is they factored the bottom for you already. So the two conditions for partial fractions are that the degree of the top has to be smaller than the degree of the bottom, which it is here. The degree of the top is one. The degree of the bottom is two because the biggest power would be two if you multiplied this out. So the degree of the top has to be smaller than and not equal to the degree of the bottom. So it's smaller than the bottom and the bottom has to factor. Well, here it's already factored, so that's okay. And so then we can use partial fractions. And so what we do, is we kind of go to the side completely. And so we'll do this part in red, I guess, or a different color. So we get uh, x minus 4 over x plus 6, x minus 2. And we split it into a over x plus 6 plus b over x minus 2. And so the idea is we split it into all the component fractions um, yeah, so, so all the component fractions that uh, could contribute to this. And so now we multiply by the common denominator and the common denominator is x plus six, x minus two, and we think of it as being over one. And we do that to both sides of the equation. So if we do that on the left-hand side, the x plus six and the x minus two cancel. So we get just x minus four. 
on the right hand side, this distributes to the two fractions. So on the first fraction, x plus six cancels, but x minus two doesn't. So you get a times x minus two. And then on the second fraction, the x minus twos cancel. So we're left with b times x plus six. It's been a while since we've done this. Does everybody follow that? Any questions so far? Okay, so now we take a step to distribute the a and distribute the b. So we get ax minus 2a plus bx plus 6b. And again, that's equal to x minus 4. And you combine like terms. So we collect the x terms and we get a plus bx and collect the constant term. So we get plus negative 2a plus 6b as the constant term. And the idea is this polynomial on the left has to be the same as the polynomial on the right. So this is x minus four over here. That means this has to be x minus four. Well, the way that can happen is for a plus b, that's one. And then this constant has to be negative four. So we say, okay, a plus b is one. And then negative two a plus six b is negative four. And now we have the system of equations to solve for A and B. There's a lot of ways that you may have learned to do that. I would look at this and think, okay, let's multiply this one by two, because then the A is I can get to cancel pretty quickly. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by two and get 2A plus 2B equals one. I'm sorry, equals two. Let's make that a little bit neater. Um, and then just rewrite the bottom equation underneath it, and we're going to add these. So if I add these, I get 8B equals negative 2. So B is negative 2 over 8, which is negative 1 fourth. Does that make sense to everybody? And so now we go back and get uh, B. I'm sorry, we go back and get A. So we plug that into an equation. We have A plus B is 1. So A plus negative 1 fourth is 1. So we add positive one fourth to both sides and we get A is five over four. So that means that the A here is five fourths and the B here is negative one fourth. So we can rewrite the integral. We can, we, a lot of times we'll skip this step but technically what this is telling us is okay, it's five fourths over X plus six plus negative one fourth over X minus two. And so that first step in the integral is based on all of this work down here. And so now you figure out how to do this integral. And on this one, this part's more straightforward. You split this into two integrals and you factor the, co the numerators out, the coefficients out. So we're going to make it 5 fourths integral 1 over x plus 6 dx and then minus 1 fourth integral 1 over x minus 2 dx. Both of these are quick u substitution problems where u is the bottom and du is just one dx. So you can really skip it. You, you just have one dx there already. So then you get five fourths natural log of the bottom for both of those integrals. So five fourths natural log x plus six. And, and then on this one, one fourth, negative one fourth natural log absolute value of x minus two plus C, and then that will work as the answer. All right, and now remember that this bottom part is about the same every time. Just make sure you're not thinking of it as cross multiplying. We need to think of it as multiplying by a common denominator. Uh, here, it's kind of like it's crossing, but it doesn't do that in general. There could be a third fraction and then it's more complicated. So we want to think of it as multiplying by the common denominator and canceling what you can and then whatever's left over is what comes down here. And then these integrals are not always quite as quick as this. Here u is just the bottom. So but these could be u subs where you need a coefficient here. So maybe this is like uh, five x plus six and then you need a five and then a one fifth or something like that. Or maybe you get something squared in the bottom and then it's 
not log anymore, or if it's an irreducible quadratic, it's inverse tangent or inverse tangent and log. And so there's a lot of different stuff that can come up here, but this is the, the basic idea of partial fractions we definitely want to know, but we did get into some more complicated ones and, and we can go over them if we want. I don't, don't know that there's a ton of those on here, but, but there's a couple on here and there, there were at the time, so we can go over any of those. But, but on 38, does that make sense? Does anybody have any question on that one? All right. So, okay, so I've got in the chat two, 27 and three. So let's go, the, go over those. So number two, uh, my bad, sorry guys, I've got like a hundred windows open. So let me find the thing. All right, so number two, Okay, so number two is a area problem. And so they're giving us the graph on problem two. Uh, I don't know how random this is for everybody. Um, the one I'm getting on problem two gives us this region. So we've got this parabola I've got X equals Y squared minus nine. Is that what everybody has or something similar? If not. I have Y squared minus seven. Okay, so it's gonna be something shifted to the left. It's probably Y squared minus something different for everybody. And then I've got, I've got X equals E to the Y, which they're putting in a different color, which is probably smart. Um, And so we've got X equals E to the Y. My guess is everybody has that. And then I have from Y equals one. So Y equals one here to Y equals negative one. Is that, and then they want the area of this shaded region. Is that similar enough to what everybody has? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so then you want to set up a rectangle. And so we'll do this in green so it'll stand out a little bit. Maybe a brighter green so it'll stand out a little more. So we're going to go left to right here. Uh, because if you go up and down, the, the top and bottom boundaries change a bunch. So like... Uh, the top and bottom would be over here, and then it would be these lines, and then it'd be this. So we don't want to do that. If we go left to right, the left boundary is always the parabola. The right boundary is always this exponential graph or, or log graph or whatever we want to call that. And so the uh, green rectangle means the base is dy. And so remember that area is just the integral of the height times the base. So we normally wrote it as uh, height times dx, the height of the rectangle times the base of the rectangle, but it could be dy. And that's what it is in this case. So here, the height is a function of y. So the height sideways. So you take the x on the right minus the x on the left. It's like the height from the shell method. So the x on the right in terms of y is e to the y. So we take e to the y minus the x on the left, which is y squared minus nine. So we get this as the height function and it might help to simplify that. So e to the y minus y squared plus nine uh, after you simplify it. And, and then yours may be minus seven or whatever. So it's plus seven, my guess is everything else is the same. And then we wanna add this for all the y's in the region. So we do the integral of the height times dy in this case. And so the area is the integral of e to the y minus y squared plus nine dy. And the one I've got is going from negative one to one. That may be something they're changing on your, on different versions as well. But does everybody follow that setup? Everybody good? Okay. And so then you actually want to evaluate this. So to do that real quick, uh, these are three basic forms. So we just split this into three and do it as integral of e to the y is e to the y. Integral of y squared is one third y to the third. And integral of nine with respect to y is nine y. And so we get negative that evaluated from negative one to one. 
So we plug in one, plug in negative one to subtract. So we get E minus one third plus nine when we plug in one and then E to the negative one minus one third, oops, one third times negative one to the third plus nine times negative one. And now we simplify that and so, okay, so E minus and what nine is 27 thirds. So that's E plus 26 thirds. And then minus E to the negative one is one over E. And then this is gonna be negative one to the third is negative one. So we get plus one third and then minus nine. And it might've been smarter not to combine those, but this is, I think, what is that? That's negative 27 thirds or negative 26 thirds. So it's actually just gonna cancel. And so it looks like we get E minus one over E, unless I made a small computation mistake, but it looks like those cancel. Double check on that computation, uh, a little slower than what I just did it, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, and even, I think WebAssign is actually pretty good about, it is pretty good about not making you simplify. So like if you type that in, it would probably be okay, right? Is that right? I think it is. All right. Any questions on this problem? I just I just put E minus one over E in, and it did not uh, say it was the correct answer. Okay. I don't know if I just wrote it or- I may be adding something wrong, or was yours from negative one to positive one? Yes. And it was the same? Yeah, the only difference was I had minus seven minus instead of minus seven. nine. That shouldn't matter. Then what did I do wrong? So E to the first, we got E to the Y here, Y squared minus nine here. And we've got, okay, e to the first minus one third. Let me rework a little bit slower then back up to here. So we've got e to the third minus one third plus nine. And then we put a negative one and we get e to the negative one minus one third. Okay. And then nine times negative one. Okay. So we've got e minus one third plus nine minus, and then, okay, one over e and then plus one over three, and then minus nine. Okay, my bad. And then this negative distributes. So we get E minus one third plus nine, minus one over E, minus one over three, plus nine. So my fault, it is E plus 18, or E minus one over E plus 18 minus two thirds. My bad, my bad. I did not distribute the negative. So plus 18 uh, minus two thirds. And then if you want to get a common denominator, that's 54 thirds. So that would be 52 thirds. So E minus one over three or one over E plus 52 thirds. Now that means that if you have a seven rather than a nine, it's going to affect what this fraction is. But my mistake, I did not distribute the negative. So yeah, that, that worked. That worked. Okay, okay cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Does everybody follow that? Yeah, my fault on that. Does everybody follow it though? Everybody good? Okay. All right. Any any questions on problem two? And then, okay, I've got 27 and three both listed in chat. I'm going to go ahead and do three just because it's kind of related to what we're doing here and then go back to 27 if that's all right with you guys. Um, so let's go to three. I think three is like area volume again, right? So... Yeah, so let's let's work three real quick and then we'll go to 27 next. So three says consider the region. Bounded by Y equals X squared plus 16. And Y equals negative three X plus 26. And then uh, set up an integral for the area and then so part A is area. It's set up integrals for these. Part B is revolve about like set up an integral for the volume revolved about y equals 15 and C is set up an integral for x equals four. Okay, so yeah, let's go through this. And then it's got like blanks so you can enter in uh, 
the integral and not have to evaluate and, and still get credit. So, okay, so if we graph y equals x squared plus 16, that's a parabola shifted up 16. And then negative 3x plus 26 is a negative slope line. The y-intercept is 26, so it's above the 16. And we know it's negative, so it's going to look something like this. It doesn't need to be to scale, but we need to uh, be able to look at the overlap of the region, which is what we're doing here. That means we're going to want a rectangle that goes up and down because that way the top boundary is always the line, the bottom boundary is always the parabola. If we go left to right, the right-hand boundary changes. And so this is the easier setup is to use dx. We want to get the intersection points. So to get those, we're going to set uh, x squared plus 16 equal to negative 3x plus 26. So we get everything on one side to solve this. So we get x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. And so that factors x plus 5, x minus 2. So that means we get 2 for the x here. So x is negative 5 or positive 2. So x is 2. And then we plug in to get y. So 2 squared plus 16 is 20. And like when you guys are doing this on a final, you should probably plug it into both to make sure you get the same thing. So negative three times two is negative six plus 26, 20. So then you're probably good if you get the same thing on both of them. If you don't, something's wrong. And so the negative five, negative five squared is 25 plus 16 is 41. And then again here, negative three times negative five is 15 plus 26 is again 41. So we get negative uh, five comma 41 as the intersection points. So we should be doing all that without regard to what we're trying to find as far as area or which volume we're trying to find. So you want to get the region drawn, find the intersection points or all the boundary points, uh, and then you want to draw the rectangle and figure out the base dx or dy before you do anything else. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions on that? Again, it's been a long time since we've done these. I think most of you were real good at this at the time but you probably didn't like sit and do these for fun through November and October, which is fair. You should not have. All right. All right, so then area is uh, height times base. So area is the, just the integral of the height of the rectangle times dx like we did on the last problem. So we just need the height function. The height of this rectangle is top y minus bottom y. So the top y is x squared plus 16. The bottom y is negative 3x plus 26, because it's down here. And then if you distribute the negative and combine like terms, you get x squared plus 3x minus 20. I'm sorry, minus 10. And so then the area is the integral of x squared plus 3x minus 10 dx. And then from negative 5 to positive 2, we want to add all of the x's in the region. And so that's it. And then if you look at the web assign, it's just trying to set that up as easy as possible for you guys to enter in. So like a is negative 5, and b is 2, and f of x is x squared plus 3x minus 10. And then it's dx instead of dy. Um, they want you to include, here it does want you to include pi or 2 pi in your answer. Uh, oh, for area, there is no pi or 2 pi, so you don't um, include that for the area. My bad, it doesn't say that on area anyway, but uh, that's what you put for f of x. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? Okay, and so then part b, uh, we're going to revolve around y equals 15. So y equals 15. Remember, this uh, y-intercept is actually 16. So y equals 15 is down here, not quite this far, but it's easier to look at if we exaggerate it a little bit. So what we had said at the time is that we think of this rectangle as being vertical, and so this is then a horizontal line, or we think of it that way. So 
we think of the rectangle as being perpendicular to this, that's when we use the disk washer method. And so the disk washer method is volume is pi integral big R squared minus little r, little r squared times the thickness dx or dy. And so we just have to find the big R and small r. And in this problem, they're both functions of x because we're using dx. So big R is the distance from the farther end of the rectangle to that line. Well, in this case, that's the top of the rectangle. So we want from here to here. Well, that's a vertical distance. So you take the top Y minus the bottom Y. Well, the top Y, my bad, you guys, we should have, I, I, I'll fix, there's something wrong on part A and my, my mistake. Um, I should have labeled these. And then we'll we'll fix that in just a second, but let's go ahead and finish this problem. So this is y equals negative three x plus twenty six. And I was looking at the labels backwards. And this is y equals x squared plus sixteen. That means these should reverse, and we'll fix that in just a second. All right, but down here, then okay, the top y is negative three x plus twenty six. The bottom y is fifteen. So we get negative three x plus twenty six minus fifteen, which is negative three x plus eleven. And then the bottom y is x squared plus 16 minus 15, which is x squared plus 1. So we get pi times the integral big R squared. Let's do a little more space there. So big R squared negative 3x plus 11 squared minus x squared plus 1 squared dx. And then from negative 5 to positive 2. How do you input that into um, WebAssign again? Because you have to include the pi. Yeah, so I would put pi times double parentheses. And I think it actually understands brackets. I think we determined that, but I would put this. Because you can bring the pi in or out of the integral. You know what I mean? Like we always pull it out just because I think it's easier to deal with. But like you could just as easily put it right here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, you know, when it says DX or DY, then put DX. Um, either double parentheses or brackets. I think it's okay with brackets too. Um, and then you guys back up here, this is my mistake. So I, I should have labeled it to begin with and I was just looking up here and looking at the wrong one. So when we do the height, it's top minus bottom. So the top is negative three X plus 26. The bottom is X squared plus 16. So let's fix this real quick so we've got it um, the right way. So I just, I reverse them. So it is negative three X plus 26 minus X squared plus 16. And then that's negative X squared minus three X plus 10. And that's what should go here. All right, so do fix that if uh, you were writing that down. Okay, any other questions on parts A and B? And we're gonna go through and do C now. All right, so I'm gonna erase this work for the intersection so we can see the graph while we're doing part C. So for part C, um, this color, so C uh, is revolve about X equals four. You know what, maybe we'll do it in a different color so it's more clear from the diagram. Um, so X equals four, is to the right of the region. And I'm going to draw way over here, which it is not. I mean, this is x equals 2, but it is to the right of the region, just so we can see it with all this other labeling I'm going to put over here. But the idea is this is parallel, or we think of this as being parallel to this rectangle. And so we use the shell method. So shell method is 2 pi rh times the thickness dx or dy. So r here is the distance from the rectangle to the line, which is a horizontal distance. Well, horizontal distances are always the right X minus the left X. The right X here is four. The left X is just X. So we take the X on the right, four minus the X on the left, and we just describe that as X because we're doing everything in terms of X. So we get four minus X and then the height is the height of the rectangle. And it is the same as the height 
up here, it's the, the height of the rectangle that we use for area. So top minus bottom, which simplifies. So we'll go ahead and write it out anyway, but top X is negative three X plus 26. Bottom X is X squared plus 16. That simplifies to negative X squared minus three X plus 10. And then the volume is two pi integral r times h, so four minus x times negative x squared minus three x plus 10 dx. And this is again from negative five to positive two. All right, does that make sense to everybody? I know on WebAssign, you would just do like two pi and then four minus x and then negative x squared minus three x plus 10, just put parentheses like that. And it's like you have the two pi in the integral rather than outside. All right. Any questions on area volume while we're on that? Good. Okay, so the other one that's been asked in chat so far is problem 27. So let me jump down to that one. Okay, so yeah. Um, we've got the integral I've got eight X to the fifth E to the X squared. My guess is everybody has X to the fifth E to the X squared, but then not eight. Is that right? Not necessarily eight. Um, I mean, the eight doesn't affect anything. You just pull the eight out. So, okay. So yeah, I mean, whatever your coefficient is, pull that out. And uh, the, the problem is actually X to the fifth E to the X squared. And so this is one where it looks like parts and it looks like U substitution and you end up doing both. Um, but what we want to do here is start with u equals x squared. So if u is x squared, and we want to start with u equals x squared as u substitution, not integration by parts at first. And so if u is x squared, du is 2x dx. And so this takes some work. So we want, we don't want the eight at all. And we want to create du at the end of the problem. So to create du, we're gonna take one of these five x's and move it over with the dx. So that's gonna leave four x's. And then we have the fifth one over here and we're getting that there for the du part. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now we need a two here. So I'm gonna take a step and multiply outside by one half and inside by two. And that gets us the du that we want. And so what's tricky about this is that, okay, this is e to the u. What is this x to the fourth in terms of u? What do you think? Yeah. U squared? Yeah, so this is u squared. So we're going to rewrite it as u squared e to the u du and yeah you can split the eight into four times two but either way we're gonna get four out here does that make sense to everybody that's all good okay so now this is parts but it's a parts problem where you have to go through and do it twice so because we already used the letter u in the problem we're gonna use different letters so we're gonna use v and w so we'll say V and DW. So V is going to be uh, U squared. DW is going to be E to the U DU. DV is 2U DU then. And W is the antiderivative of E to the U DU, which is E to the U. And so the parts formula using these letters will be V times W. So we get u squared e to the u minus w dv. Well, if we reorganize that, we pull the two out and put u e to the u du. So we're gonna have two integral u e to the u du. We're not done, but does that make sense to everybody to there? Any questions to there? Okay, and just to not mess up the coefficients, I'm gonna take a step and distribute this four. 
the four is on the whole thing. So whatever your coefficient is out here, it's on both of those. So on this problem, we've got four u squared e to the u minus eight integral u e to the u du. And now this is parts. So we do parts again. I'm going to reuse these variables because V and W never are actually used in the problem. They're not showing up here. So it's okay to, or for, to me, it's okay to recycle those variables. You shouldn't use U again because U is showing up in these, but V and W aren't. So I'm going to let V equal U and DW equal E to the U DU. DV then is one DU and W is E to the U. So now we do parts again. And we get VW, so that's U E to the U minus W DV. So that's the integral of E to the U DU. I'm gonna take a step to distribute the eight And now the integral of e to the u du is no longer parts. We know how to do that problem. So that's just u, e to the u. So we get 4u squared e to the u minus 8u e to the u plus 8 e to the u plus c. And now u was x squared. So we go through here and plug in x squared for all these. Uh, let me zoom out. Just, uh, let me zoom out in a minute so we can see it all then. But u is x squared. So u x squared squared is x to the fourth. So we get 4x to the fourth e to the x squared minus 8x squared e to the x squared plus 8 e to the x squared plus c. And that's the answer. Again, you might have a different coefficient on that stuff, but that's it on that one. Any questions on this? Let me zoom out so you can kind of see the whole solution. Uh, Colin, do you mean like just from here to here? Like this very last step? Okay, so u is x squared, right? So I'm replacing all of the u's with x squared. So x squared squared is x to the fourth. e to the u is then e to the x squared. And then, okay, cool. So just replacing them all with x squared, then it's just weird because u squared is then x to the fourth. Other questions, you guys? Yeah, 49 will be next, Nick. Yep. Um, other questions on 27 while we're on them? Okay, let's look at 49. Okay, yeah. So 49 is getting into sequences again. And so it just says determine the limit of the sequence and state whether it converges or diverges. And so uh, you're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of this. So, man, okay. So then there's not much work you really want to write out here. Uh, it's a weird problem where you need to think about the graph of inverse tangent. Um, so, okay, so there's a step I can write formally, but I'm not sure if it makes it better or worse. Uh, the idea is that as n goes to infinity, what we wanna be thinking, which is not correct to write, is that, okay, as n goes to infinity, one minus two n goes to negative infinity. Does everybody see why that is? So, cause n gets really big. So negative two times that gets to a huge negative number like negative infinity and one, minus infinity is negative infinity. And so what we're thinking is inverse tangent of negative infinity, what happens to that? The way you formally write that is you replace the inside with N. And so you, there's no algebra we're doing. We're just saying, okay, this whole part is now N and N is now approaching negative infinity. 
So it's as the inside approaches negative infinity, that's, this is the formal way to write this. I'm okay if you don't write this, but that's what we, that's the technical step to write. And now to know what that does, we need to know the graph or the easiest way is to know the graph of inverse tangent X and inverse tangent is tangent on a side and only one period of that. So this asymptote is at pi over two and this asymptote is at negative pi over two, which makes this answer negative pi over two because as the inside goes to negative infinity, inverse tangent approaches negative pi over two from the graph. Does that make sense to everybody? So if this had ended up being positive infinity in here, it'd be pi over two. If it was like inverse tangent is zero, it'd be zero. If it's inverse tangent of one, it's like pi over four, like you just evaluate it. But for infinity and negative infinity, it would be pi over two, negative pi over two. And completely fair that uh, we were thinking it's one and negative one is pi over two, negative pi over two. All right. Other, any, uh, or other questions at all uh, on this one or any other? I think I got to everything in chat so far. We still have some time, so I'm happy to answer more questions. Okay, 34, 34. Um, okay, yeah, so let's look at 34. All right, so I've got this. Is this, I know it's changing some stuff up. Is this pretty similar to what you have? Okay, all right, so. Uh, this is a trig sub problem. Um, you can probably mess with U sub and parts and might even get something to work, but I would go with trig sub here. Um, I think there's not an easy approach using parts or uh, uh, U substitution. And yeah, Nick will do uh, 12 next. Um, so, okay, so, whoops, I'm going to do one X equals. So X is going to equal three sine theta here. And the idea is we want to match the coefficients. So we're going to put a three in. And then it's going to be one minus the trig function squared. So we want sine. And then dx is the derivative of that, which is three cosine theta, d theta. And then I would recommend getting rid of the square root on the side. So we can plug in the x. And if we square that, we get nine minus nine sine squared theta. Yeah, Andrew, so there's a version of the inverse secant formula, um, but we don't cover that in this class. So, man, I would have to look up to see exactly what it was, but sometimes it's absolute value, sometimes it's not. Um, and yeah, we can go over uh, how to know which trig function to use. So the, the way to know the trig function is these identities, and it's one minus sine squared, whoops, becomes cosine squared because of the way that identity works, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And then secant squared minus one becomes tangent squared. And then one plus tangent squared becomes secant squared. Okay, so the way you use this is you know that the X is gonna be the, where the trig function is. So if it's subtraction, the order matters. And so if you, like the coefficients, you're going to make them can't factor out. So this is going to be a one and then it's going to be minus the trig function squared. So when that happens, you want sine. If it's subtraction and it's going to be a trig function squared minus one, then you want secant. So secant squared minus one, if it was like x squared minus nine. And then addition, the order does not matter. So subtraction, the order does matter. Addition, the order does not matter. So if we do, if it's one plus something or something plus one, we're going to use tangent. Does that make sense, Colin, and everybody else? Because we all got to know that. Everybody get what I'm saying with that? Okay, cool. And yeah, we'll do uh, 12 and then six after this. All right. So uh, 
the reason we do the way we do here is now we factor the nine out. Let's go back to the color I was using. Um, so we factor the nine out and we get nine times one minus sine squared theta. Well, one minus sine squared is cosine squared. And the square root of that is three cosine theta. And so the idea of these is this is what guarantees that you get a positive trig function squared under the square root. So, all right. So then when we're back up here, we replace the X in the integral with uh, the X that's here. So we make it nine sine squared theta since it's squared. So we get nine sine squared theta. The square root gets replaced with this. So we get three cosine theta. And then the dx gets replaced with dx, which is three cosine theta d theta. Any questions to there? Is everybody good doing that? And uh, it, the person who was asking is, Andrew, I think you were asking if this is secant. I, we double checked the formula, but I'm pretty sure it's x here and not x squared. And I think it's x squared minus nine. I'd have to double check that formula. Um, I haven't used it in a long time. Okay, but this is close to that. It's just not it. So, okay, so now we're going to uh, simplify this. So we factor out the coefficients. So we get one over nine, we get one over three, and we get three, and those threes cancel, but uh, we pull those out and then simplify the trig stuff down. So the cosines cancel. And we get one over sine squared theta d theta. And now, okay, the threes cancel and we try to figure out how to do this integral. Well, on this one, what we wanna do is rewrite one over sine as cosecant. Um, so this is cosecant squared theta d theta. And the reason that's a good idea is because the integral of cosecant squared is one that we know how to do the integral of that is negative cotangent. So we can rewrite this as negative one ninth cotangent theta plus C. Does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody good to there? Okay, so now we're gonna go back to X. The way we do that is draw a triangle. So we go X equals three sine theta so we go to the original substitution. We solve for the trig function. So we get sine theta is x over three. Man, that's, that is not legible. Sorry, guys. So sine theta is x over three. And then we draw a triangle or an angle in the first quadrant and label it based on that relationship. So if this is theta, this is x and this is three, or we can at least label it that way. And then the Pythagorean theorem gets us that this is the square root of nine minus x squared. Everybody clear how to label that because sine is opposite over hypotenuse or y over r. So we get x here and three here. All right, so cotangent, we read from the triangle. Cotangent's the reciprocal tangent, so it's x over y or adjacent over opposite. So it's the square root over X. So we get negative one ninth times the square root of nine minus X squared over X plus C. And that's negative square root of nine minus X squared over nine X plus C. Can't simplify much beyond that, but that is the answer. Any on that problem? Everybody good? Okay. All right, so we've got 12 and six that have been asked in chat. So let's go back to 12. Okay, and so 12. And so watch, is this something like what you're getting? All right. So on this one, it's actually just a U substitution, but it's knowing that it's, the, the hard part is knowing not to do parts or something more complicated. Here, if you just let U equal X to the fourth, 
du is 4x to the third. And so you have the du that you want. So you put the sine of x to the fourth at the beginning and the x to the third at the end. You put a four inside, so one fourth outside. So we get one fourth integral sine u du. And the integral of sine is negative cosine. And then u is x to the fourth. And that's it. And again, the tricky part is that, hey, we've done a lot of really complicated problems. This, this one is a little bit more straightforward, but it's knowing that you do that. So always try for stuff like that first. And then if that doesn't work, then go to something more complicated. Yeah, so, okay, number six next, and then number 40. Any other questions on 12? Everybody good? All right. So number six. Okay, so find the general antiderivative. So, okay, so it just says five y to the third plus 1.5. And I think your numbers are probably different. Is this similar enough to what you've got? Uh, I think Alyssa's the one that asked that. Okay, okay, cool. So this one actually, again, it's one where we're not gonna use any more complicated uh, techniques. We can just split it into three problems. So we're gonna go five integral y to the third dy plus 1.5 integral y squared dy minus 3.6 integral of y dy. So we can split addition subtraction into uh, separate problems. So we get five times one fourth, so five fourths y to the fourth plus 1.5 times one third y to the third minus 3.6 times one half y squared plus c. So no need to change that really, but 1.5 times one third is 0.5 and 3.6 divided by 2 is 1.8. And I mean, it would bother me not to do this just because if you're going to put decimals, we may as well put all decimals. But any of these last three lines should be OK as an answer. Does that make sense? Or you can convert them all to fractions, I guess, if you want. But they've got decimals in there, so I just go with decimals. But any of those are OK. Any questions on that? And again, the tricky part is, uh, yeah, and I think, so Dominic's saying he left it as 1.2 over 3, and it gives you credit. I think WebAssign's pretty good about you don't have to simplify stuff unless it specifically tells you, which usually you do not. All right, so yeah. Yeah, completely fine. Yeah, the decimals are weird, and we don't do that very often, but you treat them the same way, okay? All right, other, any other questions on that one? All right, so I think number 40 is the next one we weren't sure about. Um, so let me jump down to that. And maybe, okay. Yeah, okay. All right, and then 40 is one that does involve uh, some more complicated stuff. It doesn't mean it's harder, it just means you have to do more stuff. Um, okay, so here, we're going to use partial fractions. Uh, the bottom's factored for us already. Uh, yeah, 28 will be next, Gabby. Um, so partial fractions, and it's factored already. The degree of the top is 2. Degree of the bottom is 3 if you multiply it out. So we're good there. Remember, the degree of the top has to be smaller than the degree of the bottom. And since it's factored, we can go straight to the partial fractions part. So we're just going to come down here and say, OK, x squared plus 1 over x minus 3, x minus 2 squared. This has a repeated linear. So for x minus 3, that's a linear factor that's only there once. x minus 2 is a repeated one. And remember, every power of that gets its own fraction. What I mean by that is if this was to the fifth power, if this was to the 5, then we would have x minus 2 to the 1, x minus 2 squared, x minus 2 to the third, 
to the fourth and to the fifth, and they would all get their own fraction with a constant on top. Since it's squared, we get one and two. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so now we multiply by the common denominator, which is x minus three times x minus two squared. And we think of that as being over one. So we multiply the left-hand side by that and the entire denominator cancels. On the right-hand side, it distributes to all three of these. So on the first fraction, x minus three cancels. So we're left with a times x minus two squared. On the second fraction, one of the x minus twos cancels. So we're left with b, x minus three, and one factor of x minus two. So b times x minus three times x minus two. And on the third fraction, both factors of x minus twos cancel. So we, can, we have c times x minus three as far as what's left over. Any questions on that? Everybody good? Okay, so then we're gonna distribute everything. So we square the x minus two first, or I think that's the easiest thing to do. So if I square x minus two, I get x squared minus four x plus four. I go ahead and distribute these. So x times x is x squared. X times negative two is negative two x. And then we have negative three x. So that's negative five X and then plus six and then distribute the C and get CX minus three X. And that's equal to X squared plus one. We distribute the A, so we get AX squared minus four AX plus four A plus BX squared minus five BX plus six B plus CX minus three X. Now we combine all the like terms. So we start with X squared. So we get A plus B X squared. Shouldn't that be C three? Yes, I'm sorry, thank you. This is three C and not three X on both of those. I'm glad you told me that before I got to the next thing. That is 3C or C3, same thing. <coughs> um, thanks, Andrew, uh, rather than 3X. Okay, so now when we combine the Xs, we get negative 4AX or negative 4A minus 5B plus CX. And then the constants are 4A and negative 3 I'm sorry, plus 6B minus 3C. And let's just kind of double check that so that AX squared and BX we're getting from those. The This one we're getting from the negative 4AX, negative 5BX and positive CX. And then the constant we're getting 4a, 6b, and negative 3c. So I think we are good. Um, so then, okay, what that now means is that this left-hand side is x squared plus one. That means this is x squared plus one. So a plus b is one. There is no x, so negative 4a minus 5b plus C is zero. And then 4A plus 6B minus 3C is one. Because this constant is one. Any questions to there? And if I made a glaring mistake, let me know. I, I don't see one. Thank you for telling me this one. I think we're good. Okay, so then we wanna try to solve for A, B and C several ways to go about that. Um, I would notice first that, okay, if I add these two, the A's fall out immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so if I add those, I get B 
minus 2c equals 1. Does everybody see how I'm getting that? And then I'm not going to get much from there. So let's see. So then I'm going to go with a equals negative b plus 1 from here. I think maybe that was not what I wanted to do first, but that's OK. So we're going to come over here and say, OK, a equals negative b plus 1. And I'm actually going to sub that into both of these because it's going to get me two, maybe just one of them. But it's going to get me an equation involving b and c. So let's plug that in. Let's get rid of this. I think I probably wouldn't end up doing that. Um, so, OK, I'm going to plug this into both of these for a. And that'll get me two equations with b and c. So if I plug in negative 4 times negative b plus 1 minus 5b plus c equals 0, 4b minus 4 minus 5b plus c equals 0, that gets me negative b plus c equals 4 if we rearrange so that b and c are on the left and uh, the constants on the right. And then if I plug in this a equals negative b plus 1 into the third equation, I get 4 times negative b plus 1 plus 6b minus 3c equals 1, negative 4b uh, plus 4 plus 6b minus 3c equals 1. That's 2b minus 3c equals negative 3. Does that make sense to everybody? So then, OK, I'm going to multiply this one by 2 and put it underneath this and then add them to get the b's to fall out. So we're going to do, OK, times 2. So I get negative 2b plus 2c equals 8. Add those and get negative c equals 5. So c is negative 5. Now I can go back and get B and then A. So we know that negative B plus C is 4. So that's negative B minus 5 is 4. So negative B is positive 9. So B is negative 9. And then A from here is negative negative 9 plus 1, so A is 10. So we get A is 10, B is negative 9, and C is negative 5. There are lots of ways to go about solving that. You could use a matrix, actually, and use like Gaussian elimination if you've learned that. Learn some way to study, do this in Algebra 2, Algebra 3, pre-calc somewhere uh, in high school. However you want to go about this is fine. Uh, but we should get, looks like A is 10, B is negative 9, C is negative 5. Any questions on what I'm doing here? Okay, once we have those, now we go back, and I'm going to jot them down up here so we can see it in the top of the problem. So A is 10, B is negative 9, and C is negative 5. And so then we're going to go back up here, and we've got a over x minus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the 10 out. b over x minus 2. So I'm going to pull the negative 9 out. And c, so 10. Whoops. Should be a dx on that. And then plus 10 integral. And then instead of 1 over x minus 2 squared, I'm going to write it as x minus 2 to the negative 2. Any questions on that? All right, the first, all of these are u subs where the du is 1 dx. So the first two are log forms. The last one is u to the negative 2, where we get 1 over negative 1, u to the negative 1. But u, my bad, but u is x minus 2 to the negative 1 plus c. And so we can simplify that one. And 
that's the answer. That one is a big problem. Questions on that? That, man, that is the whole solution. 